My talk today will be about the optical defects of lenses or the defects that the eye as an optical system may show. This situation is found when cases with dilated pupil as in traumatic cases or even in a normal eye during night driving. Also, you can, such optical defects are seen when a patient looks through the periphery of the glasses or with patients with high errors of refraction. When buying a camera or a microscope, we have good brands with minimal optical defects and others with high optical defects. Even during our daily examination, we buy lenses very expensive to get a good quality of the image and instead of using a regular lens. Such defects can be of different forms like blurring image, halos, glare, star-like changes, or geometrical distortion of the image. So, Optical defects can appear in the form of spherical aberration, chromatic aberration, coma, astigmatism of oblique incidence, and geometrical disorders. In spherical aberration, rays getting into the periphery of the lens will come to a focus close to the lens compared to rays passing through the sensor. So each point of the object, and instead of forming a single point here on the image side, it's going to form different points. So in this example, if the image is received here, this is each point will appear like this. But if the image is received at this location, each point will be as big as that. And if it's here, it will be like that. In low light conditions like night driving, the pupil dilates to allow more light to enter. When that occurs, ray passing through the outer edge of the pupil may be refracted to a greater degree than the central rays, resulting in loss of focus. This is called spherical aberration. Spherical aberration may cause the patient to experience blurred image, halos, or glare, especially in low light conditions. If you cut the peripheral rays, then you're going to have a single focus. And this is the idea. If you have a pupil here and you get it smaller, then you're going to minimize or to get rid of this problem altogether. The other way to get rid of the problem is to use special lenses called aspherical lenses. In the aspherical lens, the periphery of this lens is less power than the central part. So instead of having different focuses, the whole rays will come to a focus to one point. So this is the image seen without abrasion. And here the image seal with the, with the aberration. The aspheric lens, or called the aplanatic lens, is a special type of lens that will make the focus in one point. The whole lens, when it's exposed, it will come to one point. It can be a planetic biconvex lens, as in this shape. Or even the meniscus lens can be made a planetic by flattening the peripheral part of the lens. So this is a regular plus lens, spheric, and this is a spheric plus lens. The periphery is thinner and flatter. The second type of abrasion is chromatic abrasion. If rays passes through a prism, it will be analyzed to the primary colors of light. And this is phenomena is known as dispersion. The chromatic aberration 
is more as we go to the periphery of the lens and the prismatic effect increases. So rays getting into periphery are analyzed more than those into the central area. If you constrict the pupil, I'm going to cut the peripheral rays and minimize the spherical, the chromatic aberration. So in this example, white light is focused into different colors. If you receive the image here, this is the average colors all represented. But if you receive this location image, then you can see the blue is marked focused and the red is dispersed. So the image as a whole is toward the blue side. On the other hand, if you go here back, the red is focused, the blue is out, and the image as a whole is toward the reddish side. Chromatic aberration can be axial and can be lateral, or can be, we call it longitudinal. This is the one we just described along the same axis. While transverse or lateral means rays coming not along the central area, but along the periphery. This is the type of image a person can see. As you can see, you get here some reddish and some bluish discoloration. In case of longitudinal chromatic abrasion, all the points are of the same clarity, whether in the center of the or the periphery, but you can see each point got some halos around it, red to the outside, blue to the inside. On the other side, the lateral chromatic abrasion in the central part, everything is sharp and there is no colors. But if you go to the periphery, points are distorted and you can see the colors. Same example here in the center, all the colors are fine, but you can, if you go to the periphery, you can see there is some halos of red and blue. If you notice the difference between the two images, the upper image is blurred and there is some blue and reddish discoloration compared to the original one. Again, the lower image is blurred with some blue and some reddish discoloration. This is a perfect image and this is an image suffering from chromatic aberration. To correct this, we can use a chromatic lens. A chromatic lens, it's a double lens formed of combination of flint and crown. Flint has a double dispersion of the crown glass. So if we mix such a combination, we have here plus one, minus one, so the net result will be a plus one lens. But this minus one has a double dispersion compared to the crown, and it is of the opposite sign, so the net result of dispersion is zero. So we have a lens over plus one, this is the half power, and the dispersion is zero. So this is a regular lens making chromatic aberration, and this is the doublet achromatic lens that cancels this aberration. This is the regular lens with different wide spectrum of the aberration, and here minimal dispersion is seen in cases of achromatic lenses. We can go on by loops with the advantage of being achromatic aplanatic. So we get a magnified image of high quality and no aberration. The third example of problem is coma. This is the image seen without coma and if a person or the optical system induces the, the error of coma, this spot will appear like this. Coma occurs when rays coming from the object and instead of hitting the lens along the axis, it hits the lens 
of the axis. So as you see here, rays getting in the paraaxial, more paraaxial, more peripheral, and very peripheral. This part will be focused on this location. The more eccentric will be here, and this zone will be focused here, and this zone will be focused here. So if we collect all these, you're going to end in this shape. So you get one bright area and less bright area. The problem is 50% of the energy is distributed away from it should be in this area. In this example, if the patient looks at this is the object, and here we get here the screen or the image, this point of the object will form a point here. But if you go to the periphery, an eccentric location, not along the axis, as in here, this point of the object will form a coma. So, in the central part, each point object will form a point on the image side, but as we go off the center, each point will form multiple areas of illumination like this. In case of looking at an image, this is the way it looks when everything is perfect, but if you get this error, then you can notice here that the image, especially in the periphery, is blurred. So this is the perfect situation with no coma defect, but here we get the coma defect appeared in the periphery of the lens, of the image. Coma can be corrected by using combination of lenses that are positioned asymmetrically around a central stop. Then we come to astigmatism of oblique incidence. If rays hit perpendicular to a surface lens, then the focus will be a circuit. But if you tell the lens, the focus will be oval. Why is that? Because when we make a tilt, we affect this axis, make it longer, while there is no effect on this axis. That's why you get this image. When the source of light is perpendicular to the lens, the image is circular. But if we move the light so rays come with an angle on the lens, the image will be oval in shape. The same can occur if we just tilt the lens and keep the source of light in its original location. Oblique astigmatism occurs because of inability of the lens to form point image of an oblique point object. It occurs when oblique rays react by a small aperture system and affect the sharpness of image points and image position. Again, like any astigmatism, rays coming off the center will have something like the choroid of storm you have a circle of least diffusion. You have the, those rays in the sagittal will come to a focus, while the yellow one here is still out of focus. So each point will be like this. When the, if you go posterior, the yellow is in focus, while the red is out of focus. So each point of the image will be like this, and in between we have the circle of least diffusion. This is an example of a bright star coming 25 degrees of the axis. So instead of being along the main axis, it's 25 degrees of the axis. And this is the ray configuration here. If you receive this image, I'm going to end by this cross-shaped appearance because at the circle of least diffusion you still have some effect of the sagittal and tangential rays, geometrical disorders. Distortion is an, optic, is an optical error which results in magnification differences between different points of image. The points of an object are misdisplaced 
in the image relative to the center of field. For example, this high myo person can see the image like this. On the other hand, this high hypermetro person can see the image distorted like this. We call this a pin cushion or a cushion distortion, and we call this a barrel distortion. Here, this is the normal image with no distortion, but if you have a high plus lens, the more the high, the more the distortion, you're going to end by this distortion, like a cushion. On the other hand, if it's a minus lens, then you're going to end by this distortion. This is the appearance and this square shape. And this is the same if you are looking through a microscope with no distortion, with spin cushion distortion, and with barrel distortion. So this will bring the end of my presentation. Thank you.